The subject attacked us violently. Friday then took off half his face with one bite. If the opportunity presents itself, he liked to bite the bad guys right in the genitals. And on more than one occasion, he actually saved my life. So I got selected to canine and uh, blessing him. And so the pairing of my dog was a dog that had been had come from another handler. Uh, the sergeant tried taking him. He was a very aggressive dog, not big, but a very aggressive dog. And they said, well, the, the new guy, let's give him to the new guy and the young guy. And so I'll be honest, I was scared half to death when I walked in that kennel at the vet's office the first time. And, and I thought I was going to lose an arm to Friday, who became my best friend. So canine Friday. Canine Friday. And he was, he had already had some street bites? He had some experience already. Uh, we went through the full training program with, a, with another class. And uh, I owe a lot to that dog. He, he, you know, you can't, as you know, can't find a better partner. And on more than one occasion, he actually saved my life. Talking about Canine Friday and describe him. I'm assuming he's a German Shepherd. He is a German Shepherd. We didn't have, uh, you know, imports back then. Uh, we had German Shepherds off the street, if you will, you know. Mm. So, uh, but a great dog, not a real big dog, only 78 pounds, a black and white, beautiful dog. And uh, he, uh, he had a couple things that stood out. He didn't have a tail. He lost his tail early in his career, mm. and he lost his uh, nut sack uh, early in his career going over a fence. <laughs> he's and, he's and, just a junkyard dog. He was, but I could not. Uh, he was a manhunter, mm. and I had the heart bigger than the, any dog you could ever find. He had no quit. Uh, right. He had no quit, and he knew what it was about. Um uh, he, he made me look good, quite mm. frankly. I saw people work their, you know, tails off uh, training and dogs perform half as well. So I was, uh, again, another blessing that had this amazing dog and uh, he knew how to do it. So in addition to saving my life, I'll tell you a little story that's kind of how well he was. So, you know, you know, back then we had a door release on the back door so you could release the dog, right? Back in the 70s? Yeah, they had so, that? Uh, okay. so I'm on the midnight shift and uh, there's an alarm call at the shell station up on on 7th uh, in Liberty City. And I mean, it's a typical alarm call, right? And so I'm- still there, seven and seven, nine? Yep, and I'm driving and I uh, have my lunch with me. I'm eating a sandwich and having an apple in my front seat and just cruising slowly. I park about 200 feet off at an angle from the building, right? And I'm I'm still cleaning up my uh, crumbs off my uniform to put my lunch away. And I release the door and Friday, here's the alarm call. Friday goes up checks the building, finds the break, and already has captured the bad guy inside, and I'm still putting my lunch away. So, you know, I owe a lot to that dog, and he's trying to train me, like, you need to get your ass together, get up here, put cuffs on this guy, I've done everything else. But that's the kind of dog he was. He just knew what to do. He knew what to do. And and again, how you got a hold of him, I didn't want to gloss over it, he was a little too much to handle for the previous handler? Yeah. And so it was a new to me. I had no prior experience. And uh, uh, and by too much to handle, I mean... He, 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 he was, his... was just an aggressive dog. Yeah. But I, I, got, I got to say that a dog like that, he was an anomaly in my opinion, is because he was well-known in the street, uh, did his job. He knew how to, to do area searches, building searches, and track like nobody's business and would find the bad guy and it would not quit till he did and was a great biter, hmm. you know. But also he was a performer. He, I would go to USPCA, which is the United States Police Canine Association, won the state title a couple times, took third at the nationals in the, up in the Kentucky in 1980. So again, it was just a, a, a blessing that this dog let me go come along for the ride. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so just a, a great pairing, it sounds like. Because you said he, he didn't work out with the previous handler. I think, didn't he bite the sergeant's kid? Yeah, bit, bit one of the, the sergeant's children and, you know, he was banned. But You, you were know, kind of his last hope, probably. But, you know, these dogs are remarkable and, and you're a, just an amazing trainer and and, and noted today, uh, which I have such great appreciation for. But some things you just can't teach. And I'll tell you a little story uh, in the late 70s about uh, City of Miami Canine. So there was a Florida State Trooper that was murdered at the Dolphin Expressway where the old... Uh, Booth exchange used to be used to be mm -hmm. ten cent toll, right? Mm -hmm. And a Cuban refugee, Marilito, uh, met a trooper between the two cars and gunned him down. And I happened to be working and was one of the first on the scene. And uh, uh, we eventually uh, swat. We caught the the killer three days later. But that night we found the bad guy's car up by Miami Airport, uh, in Northwest Seventh, where there was a little lake. And so we didn't do a lot of tracking back then. So uh, there was an old handler, uh, Neil is his name, and we sent a, he sent the dog at the car seat, and the dog went to the water's edge, kind of shallow, and thought, 
he's embarrassing me. He jumped in the water, put his head in the water, and came up with a murder weapon. Wow. Wow. With basically no training. No training. You guys so weren't, weren't really doing building, evidence recovery these back then. Well, we, you know, we do article searches. You know how that goes. You yeah. know, no way. We had never trained for something like that. But the natural ability of these dogs can be unlimited. I mean, that's still pretty cool even to this day. And we train for that. Yeah. Right, you know, putting a dog's nose on a scent article, which in this case was the the driver seat. Driver seat. Yeah, I mean, we do that to this day, but I don't know if back then that was really no. taught. No, no, and the only you know the, the breed that leads the way in that scent detection is, of course, bloodhounds. Mm -hmm. They have amazing capability for scent detection, well documented, well known. But we weren't prepared for that. It just illustrate again these dogs had, in many ways, unlimited capability. Uh, so much that, to be thankful for. I, I can picture him back then, like. Like, you know, what the, goes from, what's this dog doing? My God, he's like drinking water. He's got the gun. Look at that. Incredible, right? That's neat. Uh, incredible. And and as eras go on, so you you go uh, 40 years later uh, as a chief, I'm swearing in new deputies at the academy, and, I, and I've never met them before, and I come across, his name is Glasscock, and I go, well, that's a unique name. There was a trooper by that name that was murdered in Miami. And he said, well, that's my uncle. Oh, wow. Look at that. So I was there the night his uncle was killed. Incredible, incredible. And they were to swear him in. That's amazing. Small world. Absolutely, yeah. So let's get back to Friday. So you, you get a hold of Friday. You you guys somehow make it work. He ever bit you or was he ever a dick to you? The only time he bit me was in the performance of his duty. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know Grand Avenue and Coconut Grove. Mm -hmm. and I had a large crowd. I'm on a 15 foot lead. He's keeping the crowd at bay, which is very aggressive. And then you know, that helicopter effect, you've seen the dogs do it, right? Mm -hmm. 180 degrees. And as he spins around, he happens to catch me. And my also dog had, uh, if the opportunity presents itself, he liked to bite the bad guys right in the genitals. <laughs> Immense pain. And of yeah. course, he nearly missed me, and I was in a bit of pain, but I didn't want the uh, the crowd of 30 to think I was uh, a wimp, so yeah. I just, like, oh, thanks, Friday. You, you know. sucked it up. But huh? no, no. You know, but, uh, you know, we had trainers back then. We were doing amazing work. Uh, I mean, th think of this, a seven-dog attack recall with no sleeve in a public demonstration, you, those are the type of things we were doing back then. We're really pushing the envelope. Uh, I mean, who you, you won't see that today, I no, don't think. No, no, uh, With great dogs, and and they and again, great street dog. He would find a bad guy, but he would perform when necessary. And it's and it's it's very interesting too. And I don't want to go too deep into it. I don't want to bore people. I mean, I find it interesting. But the training tactics you all were doing now, 40, 50 years ago, a lot has changed. A lot has remained the same. There's still some old school training that we do, but I know things have progressed a lot. So it's great to hear that even though it's a definitely a limited budget back then, I guarantee you that. Like you said, you weren't importing the best of the best dogs, basically just hand-me-down, street dogs, whatever you get a hold of. Sometimes you get a phone call, hey, we got a tough dog over here. Can we donate him to your unit? Um, and to be able to do what you guys did with that limited amount of equipment and training, and even when we go back, like you said, SWAT, limited training. You guys were just kind of not making it up as you went, but... To some extent, you didn't have a big history with which to draw upon, didn't have the best equipment, and I think he even said you guys were using uh, repurposed, like, bad guy guns. Oh, yeah. You, you, you do a search warrant, and, oh, there's an Uzi. Well, we'll add that to the stockpile. And I don't mean in, like, a shady way. You'd probably do all the proper documentation. Get oh, the no, number, and we but... had, you know, pioneers like uh, you know, like uh, Bill Sullivan, you know, uh, uh, guys that led the way. You know, some early pioneers, but the training was sound. The mm. foundation was there, being proficient, you know, and, and um, firearms, you know, is something through repetitive training, you get better, you know. Yeah. But back to the canine, you know, finding selection and being committed, right? Yeah. It became a lifestyle, which you understand. Yes. It is a lifestyle. Absolutely. So what's a lifestyle, too? Mm. You make a commitment. I'm not going to drink off-duty hours. I'm going to be available my days off. You don't know when the bell is going to ring. Absolutely. So in canine, again, that is a, a life's choice that you are making a commitment to a, a changing your lifestyle for you, your family, for the dog, and for the agency. Yeah, because again, a lot of people don't know, but you bring the dog home with you. He's uh, there with you. You're pretty much with him 24-7. Yep. You spend more time with your dog than you do anybody else in your family or otherwise. And not every family is, you know, available for that. I mean, even after my dog passed, two years later, I was still open the back door to let him out. Mm. Mm. You know, uh, I swore he was there, yeah. you know. But, uh, but again, it, the selection, 
and the commitment, you know, that's it, 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 and then from there, what do you do with it through training? So tell us, give us a good story about Friday. Well, he, he you know, he was that man hunter, you know, uh, and I'm forged, and there are times when people get bit and they're young and, and unfortunate outcome. So in the two cases where he saved my life, a building search where someone opened fire in a, a, a close quarter battle type situation at close range, did not, I was fine. And Friday got him. And, you know, again, just remarkable response by Friday. He just knew what to do, even though we'd done gunfire training. Nothing re recreates that real life scenario, right? And the other one was a, a resident's uh, uh, hunting for a burglary suspect who was hiding in the house, hiding behind a door, had a large butcher knife. And as he came down to stab me, I hadn't seen him yet. Friday got his arm. And so I truly, you know, contribute Friday in both those cases, uh, most likely saving my life. But probably one of the scariest uh, events that ever happened because um, I'm a big believer on, you know, when the application of force is necessary, use it as intended by policy, by law, and what is ethically right. Uh, but I had a, a suspect, I got a call one night about 2 or 3 a.m. of someone trying to get in the house, you know, and he was at the window of a house of an occupied residence. I, I arrived first, found the man in the backyard, 40-something-year-old man, uh, large uh, African-American male. And, and I want to set the stage because you, you gloss over it, very matter of fact, but it's 2 or 3 in the morning. There's an unknown grown-ass man trying to make entry into someone's home. There's nothing good's going to come of that. So we usually say there's murder, there's rape, and then there's occupied burglaries, which often end up in murders and rapes. So occupied burglaries, no joke, right? So we've got a real bad dude doing real bad things at two or three in the morning. And well, luckily Friday shows well, up. Well, but nine times out of 10, uh, with, especially with the dog being present, he was on a, on a, 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 a six foot lead at that time with me. I, you know, I entered him on, a, on the backyard on a lead and, uh, the bad guys are usually going to give up, right? You, you flee, got them. You take off. You flee, yeah. but you know they know they can't outrun the dog. You're right there. It's not like the dog's in the car. He's going to give up. In this case, the 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 subject attacked us violently, and even and so I released Friday. And on who's him. in the yard? It's the bad guy and just you and, and Friday. Friday, just so, the three of us. Yeah. No witnesses, nobody else. Uh, becomes a, a very violent guy. He's attacking, striking me violently. Uh, I'm, I'm covered in blood early on. I'm, I'm actually pleading with the guy to surrender, you know, because I don't want to see Friday continue biting him. And Friday's biting, biting him on his limbs, and Friday was, a you know, a nasty biter. Uh, it came a point where the bad guy picked up Friday by the neck, up off the ground, and began choking him. And, right, and Friday then took off half his face with one bite. Uh, he released, but continued to fight. And, I, and I'm pleading with this guy now. And we're now... Minutes into this, oh, several this minutes into it, it, it was a, it, it, it was a fight, and I I no. I called for backup. Backup haven't arrived yet, uh, but Friday's just doing his job. But I'm pleading with the guy, guy, you need to stop. You need this to stop. This guy had no quit. No quit. He, you would you say he felt no pain? Is what it appeared he, to be? he appeared he wasn't feeling any pain, but it all came to a, an end suddenly. So as the fight continued violently, Friday bit him in the abdominal area and actually exposed organs through the bite. And the guy started bleeding out and actually coded on me when fire rescue got there. They brought him back to life. I felt horrible uh, that it happened, but Friday was only doing his job. We went to the emergency room for me and him, the bad guy. I'm thinking the hospital staff's looking at me like, you let your dog eat this guy? And it's hard to explain what just happened. I'm fighting for my life and Friday did his job. But, you know, I don't want to see that happen to anybody. You know, uh, I'm okay with bad guys getting caught and being bit as part of the job. But uh, it was a frightening experience. Again, I'm a young man. Do you, what do you think would have happened if Friday wasn't there? Uh, use of firearm. I probably would have shot the guy. I mean, he would I, I think there's have, a good chance, you know. He would have either killed you or you would have probably had to kill him with a gun. Well, and he was tr trying to do that. You know, rules of engagement with deadly force was a little different back then. Mm -hmm. You could shoot fleeing felons even back then, f even burglary suspects. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, you know, I probably would have deployed deadly force in defense of my own life, uh, try to avoid that. Don't know what would have happened, yeah. but certainly Friday. But again, again, what I'm getting at is is Friday, as much damage as he did to this guy, saved this guy's life more than likely. Or yours. Yeah. And, and the suspect did survive. And some people are going to be like, hey, well, why didn't you taser him? 
had no tasers back then. No, uh, Why don't you pepper spray him, Mike? No, we didn't have tasers or pepper spray yet, you know. Folks, it's just a small clip from a much longer podcast. If you want to see the full podcast, and I highly encourage that you do, click the link below. It'll pop up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you over there.